Hey, this is Peter and Adam from Sons of Silver, and you are watching Aftershocks TV. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Alex, you know, um, obviously, I got to ask you, I know you, you enjoy these questions probably as much as Snake from Skid Row does about Sebastian Bach rejoining his band. <laughs> oh, uh, your question about the thing. Yes. Okay. No, we're going to get into Stanley here. You know, okay. obviously. Yeah, no, I, I was leading to that, but please go on. Okay. And I was just going to say, you know, instead of me peppering with the questions, because I know you've talked about it a little bit, and I've seen other, you know, interviews you've done, and they kept cutting you off and never yeah. let you really finish. That's go ahead. I never do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go ahead. I just, I, I would like to know just the initial transition from Chris Stan to Stanley. Um, they, were you guys aware of it? Did he just kind of show up one day and was like, this is what I'm going to be going forward? Just take us through, I guess, the transition and just whatever you want to let everyone know about that whole thing instead of the little, you know, questions here and there about all that. Okay. Well, um, I, I'm going to couch it. Okay. okay so sure. I'm going to be selective in, uh, my, my usage of words. Sure. Um, uh, first of all, let me say this, um, which is sort of ancillary to your initial question there. Um, Stanley and I will talk once or twice a week, right? There was a time, where we didn't talk at all for years and years and years, if not a decade, if not more, right? Okay, sure. um, at least a decade, we didn't like each other. Um, and then we began to appreciate how important the other one was to what we did, right? This would have been in the early 2000s. Around 2005, we kind of baby steps back into friendship. He was like 19, I was like 21 when we st first started working together. Our first band was called Bottoms Up, okay? Um, which was a, a, a great band, didn't really sound like Life, Sex, and Death, but it was a great band um, and uh, a, a very, very, very unique band. Um, but, uh, sorry, I'm just like reflecting on all the stuff that we did, but. Um, so we, we began to have an appreciation of what each other brought to the table as far as how we worked together. And that would have been in that era right there in, the, in, in probably the late 80s, I'm guessing. Or no, the mid 80s, because it was the first band. It was the second band I ever played with was Bottoms Up, right? Okay. Um, now, at the time, Chris, um, he was already, to this day, I really have no understanding of where his inspiration comes from. It is a completely unique, special, rarefied place where his thought process uh, originates. Unequivocally, if there is such a thing as a genius, which I do believe there is, I would absolutely call Chris a genius. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. When we were in Bottoms Up to, um, I don't know why, <laughs> now that I think about it, except just for like impact and because he's such a unique individual. Um, we had a character that he played that was called The Nerd, okay? Mm -hmm. We referred to him as The Nerd. Those glasses are his real glasses, by the way. Oh, okay. Right. That was not part of the act. That's how he saw things. Literally, he, his eyesight was that bad. There were, wait, hang on. Let me get the perspective. There, uh, uh, half an inch of glasses. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so he would, he would, he would come in. He had long hair at the time um, and he would stick that up into a stocking cap and he wore a trench coat. Right. So he would come in and he would start messing with people, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, and, and just the, mm -hmm. putting an energy in the room that wasn't there before the nerd showed up. Mm -hmm. 